Hello, my name is Tasmin and welcome to a new video. As many of you guys know, I'm a big, big, big fan of books. I'm a huge book nerd. I used to have a booktube channel not too long ago. I'm an author, I'm a writer, so of course I love books. And I think books are a fantastic way to educate yourself while still being entertained. And I think they're just like such an incredible way of broadening your horizon and learning about things and just diving into a whole new world. And sometimes that whole new world is your own world, which is in a lot of trouble right now. We have climate change going on and therefore we should all be educated about why it is happening, how it is happening, what we can do and what is affected by it and so on and so forth. This is why I've decided to make a book video all about books about climate change. The books I'm going to show you are going to be in English and in German because my mother tongue is German, I am originally from Germany and some of the German books just don't have English titles and I know a lot of the people watching these videos are also German so I'm gonna make sure to have German subtitles and I'm gonna introduce you to English books and German books and make sure to mention if one or the other has translations. I'm going to start out with books that I have already read and that I would recommend to you. The first book that I'm going to talk about is one that I talked about in my Growing Roots series already. I'm gonna link it in the corner somewhere <laughs> up there and it is Turning the Tide on Plastic by Lucy Siegler. Unfortunately, this book does not have a German translation. It should have, definitely. It's so important because it's a book talking all about plastic. What is plastic? What types of plastic are there? Is plastic recyclable? And so on and so forth. It's a great, great, great start into understanding how and why plastic is a problem, but that plastic is also not the enemy. Plastic pollution is a massive, massive problem, but I didn't really understand much before I read this book and I really want to read more about it. So if you have any books about plastic, please let me know down in the comments below. I would be really interested to get some new recommendations because this, is, this feels really like a beginner's guide into the topic and I want to learn more because I, I didn't know much because everything I knew about plastic was plastic was bad and it swims a lot in the ocean, there is this thing called microplastic that is like everywhere, even on the bottom of the deepest trench in the oceans and like it's even in newborn babies by now and it's like complete madness. But I didn't really understand what types of plastics are there, I didn't really understand everything surrounding recycling because where I come from, I come from a small town in Germany that is like the king of recycling. <laughs> Ever since I'm a little child uh, I'm super used to completely separating my garbage into like the wildest varieties of things which is a good thing but I never thought beyond of what happens after I put this onto like the place where you where you then deliver your finally selected sorted garbage. <laughs> I never thought what happens with this garbage afterwards. So this book is heavily based on UK, so on Great Britain, but it is still very very informative and I would love to see this book translated or have a German book talking about the same topics. The next book is a very short book by the family of a very famous young girl. The Germans know her, her as Greta Thunberg, I think English people pronounce it Greta Thunberg, but how you actually pronounce this is uh, Greta Thunberg. Um, I think, I hope I didn't butcher this, but um, yeah. Everybody knows her, she's super controversial uh, and I love her, I completely look up to her, absolutely. And this is a book written not only by her but by her entire family. And it does not only talk about the climate, it talks a lot about the family and tragedy and mental health and physical health and illnesses and just family crisis and family life and how Greta got into this whole fight against climate change and how all of this started and like the second half of the, of the book focuses heavily on the climate while the first half of the book doesn't talk about it at all. Um, 
And I have to say, I'm super torn with this book. I would definitely recommend it because it was an insane wake-up call, but it is not an easy book to read. It is very heavy at times, not only because of the family tra tragedies, but the climate part about the book is not very hopeful, <laughs> to put it like that. It is very much, these are the facts and like it's very it's very harsh and it's very direct which is a good thing it was really like a slap in the face and like a bucket of ice cold water like emptied above your head so it definitely made me wake up but i really have to say it was not the easiest read it was also not my favorite book to read in terms of like writing style and structure and everything so it's not my favorite ever climate change book, but it was definitely a wake-up call. The next two books I'm going to talk about, however, are two of my all-time favorite books of all time in general, and especially when it comes to the climate change topic. The first one being The Archipelago of Hope by Gleb Rajgorodetsky, I think is how you say it, Rajgorodetsky? Sorry if I'm mistaken. And unfortunately, this book does not have a translation. If any one of you watching has some context to the nonfiction publishers in Germany, please translate this book. This is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. And it's so underrated. I've never seen anyone talk about this. And what it is basically is an account on climate change from the points of views of indigenous people from around the globe. So not only North America. The author travels to different indigenous people and they're talking about climate change and about solutions and how climate change impacts uh, indigenous cultures and how they think we can solve it. And indigenous people are the guardians of nature. And they have so many good, interesting ideas that nobody wants to listen to. Like, no matter the discussion, indigenous people are always heavily excluded. And that is also true for the whole climate change. Like, if you look at the big famous book about climate change, it's all by white people, or not all, but a lot of them are written by white people or white men for that matter. I want to hear the voices of indigenous people because their accounts on climate change are so much more important than a lot of other people's. And this book really focuses on that, that aspect and it also focuses heavily on finding solutions. So this book, I need to give it a reread already, like I really love this book a lot. The next book I'm going to talk about is by one of those white men, kind of, but I still absolutely love it. And that is a German author, and that is Peter Wohlleben. It's not the book that I'm going to talk about, so I'm going to put it to the side. But uh, yeah, German people will know him. He is super famous in Germany. He had one of his books like turned into a movie, and that is exactly the book I'm going to talk about. The book is The Hidden Life of Trees in English, or Das Geheime Leben der Bäume. His books are translated into many, many languages. The Hidden Life of Trees talks exactly about that the hidden life of trees. It talks about trees and forests and how they work, how they communicate, how trees are living beings, how plants socialize or how trees socialize with each other and how it all belongs together. And it's like so amazing. It's like so mind boggling to me what is in this book and it is so well written. So if you have not picked it up, you have no excuse. I'm pretty sure these books are available in your language please give them a read. They're also, this is, as I said, not the book, but uh, another book by the author, but they are not very big. Like all of his works are not super big. So they're a quick read, they're very entertaining and they're so educational and they're such a game changer. A book that I read in university when I was writing a paper was Degrowth by, oh God, I will butcher these names and I would like to apologize. Uh, Giacomo Dalisa Federico de Maria and Georgios Kalis, um, and I read this to, to write a paper, and I remember when I first read it all those years ago, I read this, and one other book, I will put it 
on the screen. Uh, I think einfach jetzt machen in German, but I'm pretty sure it also has an English translation. I read these two books for uh, a paper in university times and I remember reading both of these books and thinking like this is completely unrealistic, this is completely stupid, this will never be a solution. Now, moving into the future and like having start, like I started to garden, I'm a part of a small community here on, on the Azores Islands and like my life has completely changed, my life has completely turned around and now I look back onto these books and think like, yeah, they definitely have a point. These two books are super underrated and barely anybody is talking about it. Degrowth is a topic that is slowly coming as a trend, I think, nowadays in the conversations. I think there's also a new book focusing on degrowth that is like popping up here and there nowadays. I will also put like just the cover here on the screen. I think it's called Less is More. Um, but yeah, the, the whole concept of like degrowth and like working with farmers and localizing things like it, they they really talk about anti-capitalist movements and anti-globalization movements that does not mean they think globalization is bad in that sense but they say if we if we really want to solve the climate crisis if we want to prevent the climate crisis we need to focus on our local communities and we need to be more at home in the sense no massive traveling things if you buy food buy it regionally buy it seasonally like some of those like basic things that a lot of people already try to follow but really to also like engage in your local community and like those ideas are not necessarily new but they're not talked about enough and so i think these books are actually a good 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 starting point for these discussions. Another book that I have read is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott and this is a collection of I, th I think essays uh, by Alicia Elliott who is an indigenous woman and she talks about her life as an indigenous person and as you can see indigenous literature or indigenous people play a massive massive part in the discussion around climate change or they should be playing a massive role in the discussion around climate change because climate change racism oppression of like everyone capitalism consumerism and so on and so forth colonialism like all these things they all belong together they're like all holding hands they're like completely intertwined and especially the topic of indigenous people is so important when it comes to climate change because we need to understand their way of living and their the ways they are oppressed to see how we are also oppressed especially when it gets to topics like climate change and i don't mean oppression in the sense of the way they are oppressed but in the sense of the rich people on top of economy and politics are doing everything in their power not to change things and to not work for a good future for all of us and that includes the climate and as long as indigenous people are oppressed so long we will have a climate crisis and that's that's about it and uh, Alicia El Elliott in this book doesn't really talk much about the climate crisis but she talks about the reality for Native Americans in North America and how life is for her and I think it's so important that we understand how they are treated because it really opens your eyes on how politics really work in the areas where you think nobody is looking at and how therefore you can take this and connect it to the fight against climate change. The next book is also related to indigenous topics and that is a book that only is available in German. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it does not have an English translation as of yet. It is called Der Letzte Herr des Waldes by Thomas Fischermann and someone that I'm gonna butcher the name of and I would like to apologize. Mara Rejuva Tenharim. The Tenharim are indigenous people in the Brazilian Amazon region where a lot of the illegal logging and burning of the Amazon is taking place. It's a super complex topic. And I was a little bit afraid that the fact that it was like co-written by a white German guy um, 
would have a negative effect on the book because I mean I studied cultural anthropology I have I've written enough accounts of white people about indigenous people to be very careful with those things um, but I have read all the anecdotes at the end of the book which there are a lot of and I would absolutely recommend reading those when you're reading the book and I'm more at peace now because I see that he has really tried to let the Tenarim tell their story and not so much interfere as himself. Of course there is always a certain degree of influence if you are writing a book, there's always you who chooses what to share, what not to share, how to phrase it and so on and so forth, but I really see that he did a lot of research and that he was really invested into the topic, but it's uh, again a pretty short book and it's so eye-opening when it comes to the whole problematic of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. Um, the topic is even more complex than it is pictured in the book and already in the book you see that a solution is almost impossible out of so many reasons. And again, it's one of those accounts where I say we need to understand the tiny details and the big structures that are at place to actually provoke change. We need to know the problems before we can find solutions. And it shows again that indigenous people are just on the forefront of this fight and that we need to focus on them way more than we do. Editing Tasman here, I completely forgot to talk about a book. Uh, and this one is a very specific one for German people. So I'm just gonna quickly switch language and talk about it in German <laughs> because this book makes zero sense for anybody else. Klimawende von unten ist eine Art Broschüre, die man sich online bestellen kann. Also es ist nicht wirklich ein Buch. Und zwar kann man sich das Ganze kostenlos online schicken lassen. Ich verlinke euch das. Und zwar wirklich per Post, also nicht nur digital. Und da geht es wirklich darum, wie man politisch was verändern kann. Also das Ganze ist ein, eine Broschüre erstellt vom Umweltinstitut und ein paar anderen Organisationen. Und da geht es wirklich darum, wie macht man ein Bürgerbegehren, etc. und so weiter. And the last book that I'm going to talk about that I've already read so far is unfortunately another book that is only available in German and does not have an English translation, but it has one of my favorite climate change book covers of all time. And it is called Heistzeit by Mujib Latif. And he's a German meteorologist, I think is the English term. He is a professor and he's like an expert on all things weather and climate. So he's like one of the most competent people to have written those books. Like this is not his only book, but this is the only book that I've read so far by him. Um, and it, I think the last book, yes, it's the last book that I've read recently about uh, climate change. And I have to say I was not the biggest fan. I will still recommend it. I've written a full-on Goodreads review about this book because I was so torn uh, on how to talk about this book because I really really want to recommend this book because it is a good book and I think a lot of people need exactly this book to wake up and to understand. But on the other hand, for me personally, I didn't like the book at all uh, because it talks about what climate change is, why we have climate change and so on and so forth. While talking about it, he focuses massively on people who deny that climate change exists in the sense of he takes the arguments of those people and like deconstructs them. And by reading this book you are very well equipped to talk with those people. It gives you all the facts against those people that you that you could possibly need and to understand really everything surrounding this whole discussion. However, while I do acknowledge that this is incredibly important and while I do really appreciate the work that went, to, went into this book, I personally just don't like this type of discussion. I'm a strong believer that if people do not want to believe in absolute facts that are like slapping you in the face right now, there is no 
need and no sense in wasting your time and energy in, just, in, in even talking with them and trying to explain it to them because they just chose not to believe. It's not that they don't know things, it's just that they don't want to see it and they don't want to change things and that's all. And I don't want to waste my time and energy on those type of discussions and my personal path of education and activism and taking action and creating change is a completely different one than the one that is presented in this book. But as I said, I really acknowledge the work that went into this and I see how this book can be a massive game changer for some people and how this book is incredibly important, but I personally just didn't really like it. <laughs> Another book that could be ending on the same pile as the book I just mentioned is the book that I'm currently reading, which is The Future We Choose by Christiana Figueres and Tom Rivet Karnak. Karnak? Uh, again, names, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a very, very famous book, and I don't think it has a German translation actually, but it's a very famous book. It talks a lot about the Paris Agreement and so on and so forth. I'm like, I think halfway through at this point, something like that. And when I started reading this book, I was convinced this was going to be a five-star book and one of my new favorite non-fiction climate change books of all time. But now that I'm like halfway through, I feel it's very repetitive of things that we already know. And it's very much focused, as I said, on the Paris Agreement, which is a controversial topic that I'm not going to get into right now. But um, yeah, let's see how I will think about it when I when I finish the book. You will probably see it in an upcoming Growing Roots episode. Or also on my Instagram. I will link my Instagram as always down below. If you want to follow me there, I usually make like little story updates with the books that I've read recently. Now that I've talked you through all the books that I've read so far and gave you some recommendations, I would also like to talk about the books that I want to read because luckily, fortunately, we are getting more and more and more books about climate change. And when I talk about books about climate change, as you could see by the books that I've already presented to you, I do not only talk about things that explain the, the, the climate change in and of itself, but also books about indigenous, about or from indigenous people and things that talk about like ecosystems, like the ocean or a forest or plants or whatever it may be, or like things that like are, are against capitalism, like degrowth books, like things like that. So I'm gonna leave my Amazon wish list <laughs> down below so you get an idea. It's also full of fiction books, okay? Please don't get confused. It has like all the books that I'm interested in on there. But if you like scroll through it, you will see the amount of books related to climate change on there and maybe some of them will inspire you. But let me talk to you about a few books that are very, very strongly on my radar that I really want to read soon. The first book on this list is a book that will probably be the next book that I pick up, and that is Climate Justice by Mary Robinson. And this is a book that promises to combine the topic of climate change with feminism and hopefully social justice. Uh, it's apparently very short and I'm very, very interested if this book can hold up to my expectations. The next book is a book that is only available in German. It does not have an English translation and that is Überleben by Dirk Steffens, which is this guy, and Fritz Habakus, which is this guy. <laughs> here on the back. And it says in the subtitle Zukunftsfrage Artensterben, wie wir die Ökokrise überwinden. This is uh, basically saying um, that it will talk about uh, the animal extinction. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes my language brain doesn't work. And how we can survive the climate crisis. I'm super excited for this. I got this from my mother as a present and I got super excited because I absolutely adore Dirk Steffens since I'm a little child. Two other books that kind of go hand in hand with Überleben in my brain uh, and German people will know why uh, and that are only available in German unfortunately are the books by Harald Lesch, uh, Die Menschheit schafft sich ab and what was the other one? Wenn nicht jetzt, wann dann? And they talk about the Anthropocene Anthropocene and about the climate crisis and he is again one of those scientists that is very very popular in German. He's on he's a TV moderator just like Dirk Steffens is and uh, yeah I'm very excited for these books. 
The next book is a book that I bought years ago on a whim and it's called Mut zur Nachhaltigkeit, 12 Wege in die Zukunft. Uh, it actually has an English translation and that is A Sustainable Future. This is a collection of different authors that talk about, yeah, being courageous to be sustainable and like different ways we can move forward. Another completely German book on this list is Die Meere, der Mensch und das Leben, Bilanz einer existenziellen Beziehung by Mujib Latif. I already talked about the author before and this is a book talking about our relationship with the ocean. Another author I've mentioned before that I want to read more of is Peter Wohlleben. I want to read every single book, book this man has ever written and this is uh, just one of them that I have actually as a print here. It's Das geheime Netzwerk der Natur, wie Bäume Wolken machen und Regenwürmer Wildschweine steuern. And this is the secret network of nature. It has an English title too. Most of his books are translated into English and as I said also many other languages. So I will, I, I, there are many others. I will try to put some covers over here. He has so many books and I want to read all of them. The next book is a book that was originally published in English, but it also has a German translation and is called The Drawdown by Paul Hawken. And this name might ring a bell for those of you who have watched the documentary Kiss the Ground. I have talked about this documentary in my first Growing Roots episode. I love the documentary even though I see its problems too. Um, but yeah, I'm super interested to read this book because I found the ideas in the um, documentary super intriguing. So I'm interested to see if this book can hold up with the visuals of the documentary basically and if it can offer more solutions into that direction and can go more into depth of why this could be a solution or one of the solutions that we need to, yeah, take care of the planet. If you have not already noticed, I love, love, love to read books about very specific ecosystems, plants, animals, and so on and so forth. So I have a lot of those on my list that I mentioned, uh, but the book that I'm like most excited about, which is already on my ebook reader and is staring at me there, is Spying on Whales, The Past, Present and Future of Earth's Most Awesome Creatures by Nick Pienson. I recently wrote an article about the importance of whales in the Atlantic Ocean. I will link it down below if you want to read it. And I love whales. I live on a whale island. Like we are famous for our whales. And I just love whales. They are such amazing creatures. So I really want to learn more about them. I also want to read the books by Naomi Klein. She's like a staple when it comes to climate change literature, but I have never read anything by her so far, so I would like to change that. I also want to increase my efforts to read more about and from indigenous people in general. And two things that are on my reading list are one, Tribal Peoples of Fort Tribal Peoples for Tomorrow's World by Stephen Corey. I already have this as an ebook. And the other thing is not really a book. It is a PDF that you can download online. And it is the Indigenous World 2021. And I put this on this list because it has 800 pages. So I think it counts as a book. I'm absolutely terrified of reading this, especially because I hate reading PDFs. So that's kind of sad. I really hope I will get around to reading it though, because I think it's important. Other than that, I just, as I mentioned five times already, I really want to read a lot of books about different kinds of animals, plants, ecosystem, about the Anthropocene, about indigenous experiences and solutions, and different ways of sustainability, because fighting climate change will not have that one big solution that will rescue us all. This does not exist, we need to let go of this idea. We need to find a lot of different ways on how we can move into the right direction because we are all individuals. We all have our own stories, we all have our own cultures, we all have different needs. So we need to find solutions that work for all of us and that do not exclude people and that make change possible for everyone. And so we need to find so many different ways of sustainability, also on so many different levels as well. So if you have any recommendations that I haven't mentioned yet, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you with my next video soon. Goodbye.